Testing. One, two, three. I don't think this... Is this thing on? I don't think this thing is on. Can anyone hear me? Hi, everyone. I'm Christy Smithers, an assistant here at the Institute. We're just about ready for you next door. But before we go in to see today's presentation, here's a message from my boss, the head of the Imagination Institute. <laughs> Fish are friends, fish are friends, not food. Uh oh, the audience is already seated. Where's Professor Zelinsky? I don't know. Uh, hello everybody. We'll be with you in just a minute as soon as we find the guest of honor. Look, there he is. Now here's the soul of rock and roll with a lean message for everybody. W. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the WDW Radio Show, your Walt Disney World information station. I'm your host, Lou Mangello, and this is show number 168 for the week of May 2nd, 2010. We'll take a look at some Walt Disney World news and a few rumors this week, including some old favorites getting ready to return to the parks, and Imagineers continue to test ways to pass the time in the queue. This time, at a classic attraction in the Magic Kingdom. I'll ask you to comment in the show notes and weigh in on some possible changes that may be coming. I often kid about attractions and shows in Walt Disney World just being things to occupy your time in between meals, but the parks and resorts do offer a wide variety of wonderful dining options, and not all of them require you to make dining reservations in advance. In fact, some of Walt Disney World's best food can be found at the numerous counter service locations. So this week, we'll count down our top 10 list of Walt Disney World counter service restaurants. And if you weren't hungry when you started listening, you may just be by the time you're through. And hopefully, we'll introduce you to some options that you might not have considered before. I'll have a few announcements and then play more of your voicemails at the end of the show. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this week's episode of the WDW Radio Show. In this week's Walt Disney World news, it's going to be a great summer at Walt Disney World for many reasons. First, Summer Nightastic is going to start on June 6th, go through the entire summer season until August 14th. That includes the return of the Main Street Electrical Parade to the Magic Kingdom, featuring new LED lights, new audio technology. We also get a huge new daily fireworks show called Summer Nightastic, Fireworks Spectacular. We get a new drop profile, new special effects over a Tower of Terror, and we're also getting back an old friend because Disney finally confirmed the rumors that Captain EO is indeed returning to Epcot beginning July 2nd. The 3D film that stars Michael Jackson opened in February in Disneyland as the Captain EO tribute was also recently confirmed to be coming back to Tokyo Disneyland on June 30th and Disneyland Paris on June 12th, meaning that Walt Disney World is the last of the theme parks around the world to receive the film that premiered there back in 1986. It's going to temporarily replace Honey, I Shrunk the Audience for an indeterminate period of time, but it is expected that Honey, I Shrunk the Audience is supposed to come back. And speaking of rumors that also came true, Disney confirmed that a new virtual game is going to be coming to Toy Story Mania in late May. Bo Peep's Ba Loon Pop is going to be removed and make way for Rex and Trixie's Dino Darts. That marks the first change to the attraction since it opened two years ago this month. It's been rumored and expected that the games would change based on Imagineers stating during the opening of the event that the games were easily swappable based on the fact that they're completely computer-generated. Now, the new game is going to feature new balloon targets set in a primeval world filled with volcanoes and lava balloons 
and it is going to include Toy Story's original character Rex and a new character from Toy Story 3, Trixie, who's a blue triceratops. Some other changes are going to include the Ham and Eggs game is now going to be hosted by Ham and Buttercup, another new character who's a unicorn from Toy Story 3, and there's also going to be new characters in the prize scene as well, and also going to be including new music. Also, starting on May 9th, Lots O Huggin Bear, who's a new Toy Story 3 character as well, is going to have a meet and greet over at Disney's Hollywood Studios and Disney's California Adventure. He's also going to appear in Block Party Bash and the Pixar Play Parade. Now, last week over in the Magic Kingdom, Imagineers were testing and closely watching guest reaction to a new temporary interactive game in the queue of the Haunted Mansion. Now, this is continuing a recent trend of quietly testing new interactive elements in queues and other methods to reduce and enhance wait times for guests. Now, as possible testing ground for what may be coming to Fantasyland, inclu- including the queueless Dumbo queue, tests have also taken place at the Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh and Rock and Roller Coaster starring Aerosmith for both the queueless system and ways to enhance the queue areas with interactive games. Now, at the Haunted Mansion, Imagineers and executives watched guests interact with and react to the system, both live and through cameras that appeared to be hanging above the queue. The display featured sketches of the Dread family and included their epitaphs underneath. It then led guests on a search for hidden fortune when they they would approach the display and they hear the characters speak. Now, I'd love to hear from any listeners who had a chance to try this last week or any of the other systems over at Winnie the Pooh or Rock and Roller Coaster. Please post your comments in your show notes if you've had a chance to test these, or if not, let me know your thought on these type of systems. Do you like seeing these sort of games in the queue? What do you think of this possible queueless queue system where you're given sort of a deli counter style ticket and told to come back for when you can ride the ride. Again, you can post right in the show notes at wdwradio.com. And if you do like this idea, what would you like to see? And maybe what attractions would you like to see this system implemented in? And finally, speaking of queues, Muppet Vision 3D over at Disney's Hollywood Studios is now currently closed as of April 24th. It's going to remain closed through May 14th. And the rumored change may be not just an upgrade to the projection system, but more importantly, an all-new film in the queue, including the possible installation of flat panel TV. And I know many guests and Muppet enthusiasts are wondering, is this the first of many changes and possible additions of the Muppet characters and franchise being more present in the Disney theme parks? To comment on any of this news, share news of your own, comment both on the show notes at wdwradio.com start your own discussion in the forums or on the facebook page at facebook.com slash wdw radio hurry back hurry back You've heard me get on my stepladder and eventually onto my soapbox preaching how Walt Disney World is not only so much more than simply hamburgers and french fries, but it really offers some of the best dining you can find anywhere. And that being said, and still holding true, sometimes in the parks, we just want to grab a quick bite and move along as there are memories to be made, attractions to be ridden, and yetis to conquer. But that's okay, because some of that great dining I just talked about takes place not only at the sit-down restaurants, but at the counter service ones, too. And for all the joking and ribbing that I get about talking so much about food, I've only done one other top 10 directly food-related segment. And that streak is going to end today, as Tiny Bananas Tim Foster and I will explore the top 10 
counter service at restaurants in Walt Disney World. Tim, my friend, welcome back. You pulled out Tiny Tim. You got Tiny Tim Tim and Bananas Foster in the same one. I'm not touching that (laughs) at all. (laughs) And you know, it's funny because when we talked about doing this segment, certainly counter service restaurants, food, right up my alley. You were like, oh, I have to do so much research for this one. How much research could you possibly have to do on restaurants in Walt Disney World? Well, you got to, it's hands-on research, of course. I mean, I got to make sure stuff that was offered before is still there. I'm pronouncing the name of the dishes right. Is it hamburger? Is it hamburger? (laughs) That kind of stuff. It's hard. You know, the the Papiette Bay veranda hasn't been around (laughs) for like 30 years, just so you know. (laughs) Oh, boy. So we'll see how many re- references to restaurants. They've ex- uh, there's one for you. We have to come back and do the extinct restaurants of Walt Disney World top 10. Well, you know what? I got a surprise for you because I have an extinct one in my list. You do? Yes, is I it, do. Is it the Oyster Bar at Captain Jack's? Oh, we got to scratch that one out. <laughs> no, actually, it's not. It's a, su- it's a surprise. Interesting. It's a personal one. Okay. Oh, God. There's yeah. a, there means there's a story attached. There's a story. Go with me there's here, people. My wife had go just gotten me. wet. Go with she me. just got wet on Small World, and she needed a break, so we went to... Oh, hey, stop. You're, you're ruining my story. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't realize that's what's... All right. But, but seriously, all, all, um, all joking aside, you know, I, I do talk about the food because I hear so often from first-time visitors that don't prepare properly to go down you know i was just so tired of of hamburgers and chicken nuggets and and i and i roll my eyes because there is so much good food there and i praise so many of the sit-down restaurants but honestly you can't and probably you shouldn't do three sit-down meals a day you know a sit-down breakfast then a lunch and a dinner not only is it potentially a lot of food if you have a large family it can get very expensive and i actually like going to the counter service restaurants because I think there's such a huge variety of options and it's a great way to sample so much of the different cuisine that Walt Disney World has to offer and whether it's a counter service restaurant or some of the carts they are not all burgers and fries well I did like top five hamburgers at Walt Disney World I better change my list real quick Hold listen on. I'm just saying there's a video segment coming that I, I I'm yeah. giving away, what? but I'm not giving it away. So there's and, and look, there's also there's a lot of ad- advantages. Oh, you don't I'm, I'm shooting a video segment that I can't all do in one fell swoop. So anyway, the, there's some advantages too. In addition to a lot of the counter service restaurants being less expensive, certainly we talked about preparing and planning. There's no advanced dining reservations required. So for people that can't make them or don't like to make them and, and say, look, I don't want to f- try and figure out what park I'm going to be in, what time and what I'm going to feel like eating six months in advance. Being able to walk up and sample some of these things is a great way, especially if you have a family that's on the go. If time is a factor, if money is a factor, uh, and there are some great choices, obviously, that we're going to cover in our list and very, very lengthy honorable mention list. Oh, boy. Good thing I had three. Three. <laughs> you might need a double espresso to get through this one. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. You and food. Me. I've seen you do a, a, a sit-down restaurant and a counter service and a cart all in a row. So <laughs> It's purely, you know why? Because Research. I want to give the listener the best possible segment I can for this top ten list. Yeah, that's why you did it. That's why I did it. So I'm going to let you go first because I'm sure there's going to be a lot of... I I actually think there's going to be a couple of duplicates that I know we're going to have on the list. I'm thinking this might be a first. I don't don't think we will duplicate on this one. I want to see how many restaurants you mentioned that aren't around. I'll I'll bet you a dinner. The fireworks factory has been closed for decades and it wasn't counter service anyway. But go... I love... God, my dad and I love going to fireworks factory. Anyway, move on. Go to the first one on your on your list. Now, are these in any sort of particular order? Like, is the last one on your list your number one? That's where I want it to be. I want you to save the home um, run till the very end. Yeah, sure. Actually, the way I usually order my list is the ones I think you're doing, I put first. So I steal them. <laughs> Pretend I'm not here. Well, it'd be no fun that way. Who would I make fun <laughs> of? 
Well, my first one, my first one is kind of a cheating one. It's my nostalgia one. <laughs> you cheat right off the bat. I love. Well, it. <laughs> it's not cheating, but you can't really go there anymore because you know. That's um, just so you know, this will be really helpful to people that are planning their. their... I know. So well, if I'm you're planning sp- your vacation in the past, this segment's gonna be perfect for you. So. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm going to start you at the electric umbrella, and you can still go there. Right? But it's still there. It is still there. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, now, the electric umbrella, it, it, it's, um, it's a place we love to go as a family when we're there. I mean, it's, it's your typical fair. We love sitting outside, though, and enjoying watching the goings-on in Future World and people walking around and hearing those obnoxious birds chattering overhead incessantly. I don't know what it is they want besides my food. But the reason I bring it up... Th- Are you th- saying that as a joke? Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. well, you need to explain Why is that. that a joke, Lou? Well, Tell you need everybody. to explain it because people might, might not realize about the, the non-bird sound that you hear. There are birds chirping overhead. But if you looked up, darned if you'll be able to find any birds. And why is that? Because they're not really chirping. Or tweeting, and I don't mean tweeting in the 2009 <laughs> sense. I mean tweeting in the in the original bird sense. They're not chirping or tweeting. They're not happy birds, Tim. They're, They're birds speech. in distress. They are birds in distress. And what does that do? To try and keep those dive bomber birds there from stealing you your French go. fries. <laughs> and I wish they'd have one on the boardwalk because one of them stole my popcorn once. But you can also hear them in Norway, by the way, right outside the bakery. But I digress. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, you digress. You also took away number. All right, we'll get there later. But um, now the, the nostalgic point I bring up is the restaurant that was across the way once upon a time, the Pasta Piazza Restaurante, assuming I'm pronouncing that right. I'm going to mangle so many of these restaurants' names because I'm <laughs> going to be scooting around World Showcase in a little bit here. Um, the, the reason I bring that up, again, it, it had standard fair pizza that sort of thing but it was the first restaurant that my wife and i went to when we went to epcot for the first time when we had our magical evening the story which i think i've told 58 times by now and i hear lou snoring so i'm not going to tell that's it not again me, that's the entire audience but move on. <laughs> i'm not going to tell the whole story but you know it, it holds a special place now of course it's the epcot character spot i still want my pizza but it is weird walking through there and still, if you had been in the restaurant, seeing the remnants of it. Um, and it always puts a little twinge in my heart. But then I'll run over to the electric umbrella and get my burger, um, even though I'm going to put the burger on the list of my top five favorite things to eat. But it'll fill the spot when necessary. So your first one on your top... It's one that doesn't exist. doesn't exist. And I got to yeah. tell you... One that I probably don't wish would come back. I'm not wishing it came back. You know what? Well, well, really- but, and here's why. Because I'm going to tell you one that's not on my list. And if it's on yours, this will be an interesting discussion. One Uh-oh. that is specifically not on my list yeah. is Toy Story Pizza Planet. And, and it is not their fault. Because much like the Pizza Piazza and the Toy Story Pizza, you can't get good pizza in Florida. It's the water, it's the something, it's whatever it is. Water. It's Yeah, it's the water, because the water, you can't make good bread. Yeah. Listen, nobody in Florida knows what a real bagel is. When I go to New Jersey, that's like the only <laughs> thing I look forward to is pizza and bagels. So, um, Toy Story Pizza Planet, not on my list. Not Wait, on my I can list. Throw, I'm going to use the electric umbrella as my counter service tip of the day. No extra charge for this one. Because I see people mess this up all the time. When you get to pretty much any counter service restaurant or the vast majority of them and you have the cashier up front and you pay and then you go it down the line to get your food there's two lines you can go on either side of the register i don't know how many times i see a massive line on one side nobody on the other side actually that's good for me because i'll just go up to the other side and be next in line to the disdain of all the other people standing in line but but just remember that if you're seeing that there's two, you can go on either side. They're both open. So don't be shy. Go up. It's the sheep rule. Everybody gets in the same line with everybody else because that's the place <laughs> the to be. The sheep rule. The sheep rule. All yeah. right. So let me, just, let me just backtrack for a second. Let me just recap. Uh, come on. <laughs> the first one on the list, a, a place that no longer exists, could yeah. not serve good pizza. If yeah. you're getting online for your fresca or your tab, don't yeah. be a sheep and go don't on be the a other sheep. Line. <laughs> 
right, you want some good? Go to the go get ice cream where it used to be. It's it's good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Lou, up, you're up next. You can email Tim directly, by the way. Uh, <laughs> if you head to guidetothemagic.com, you can find all of his contact information. I'll give you his home address if you like okay, as well. Yeah. Um, the first <laughs> one on my list, um, and of, uh, there are actually many. Surprise, surprise. Surprise. Um, I, I'm, I, I don't know specifically what order I want to put them in because there's two that are vying for, for the top. So... Uh, I'm going to throw the easy one out there because people are saying, Lou, just get it out of the way. You know Pecos Bills, Tall yeah, Tail Inn and Cafe yeah. is going to be on the list. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because I've said this, you know, sort of half-jokingly dozens and dozens and dozens Can of I times. Can I say it for you? Please do. Best burgers on property, bar none. I know they're the same, but they, for some reason, they taste better there. Best burgers in the parks. Best burgers in the best park. Burgers in the, oh, you're right, because there's another there's special others. burger. There are others. About. But I'll tell you best something. Best burgers in the parks, I know they're the same, but they taste better there. And they've got the taco salad. They've got other stuff like that. But look, the new Third Pounder Angus cheeseburger with the onions and the barbecue oh. sauce and the fixings. First, you don't need to put any fixings there, but you get your cheese fries, because now you can get the cheese again at the fixings bar. Ooh. You go over, you throw all the good stuff, you make Widowmaker fries or however you like yours, the fried onions, all that good stuff. Um, is it probably the most, you know, health conscious and calorie conscious? Absolutely not. But you need a, a nice, good, big meal. I, I really like the Angus cheeseburger. I've had it maybe three or four times so far. Um, really, really good and made the best burger in the parks even better because it's not like a hamburger. It's like a steak burger. Mm. I think it's like eight ninety nine somewhere around there. Note to self: Do not go on Big Thunder Mountain Railroad with Lou after this. <laughs> you don't ride Big Thunder Mountain anyway, so who are you kidding? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I like Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. All right, I do. Move on to the next one that that doesn't exist on on your on your list. So if you're going to Wiki Watchy, <laughs> this is the one that Tim Foster recommends. Hey. Hey. <laughs> I love. Do you remember? Let me see. All right. Uh, contrary to your three-pound hamburger or whatever it was you were tossing out there, I'm going to go to the other side of the spectrum, to the Land Pavilion and Sunshine Season. Ah, I love it. The ultimate. Well, can't be the ultimate because it's only number four on my list. But um, I really, you can get anything, anything you want. Spicy Thai chicken, rotisserie chicken. Salmon, my stepfather had the biggest pork chop I have ever seen the last time we were there. And he loves his pork chops. Oh, that was a that was a piece of meat. But my favorite thing I get there, and I get this all the time. What I usually do, I'll go there like pre-lunch just to get a snack. The little fruit and cheese platter they have. I, I love it. it. It's it's not very expensive. You get there, you take it out. I always you know leave the lamp pavilion, go sit outside on a bench. Um, where it's quiet near the waterfall or the gardens, what have you. Have a nice little snack. But really, anything you want, it's there. And uh, and you can't go wrong. This is actually, this was on my list. It was on um, your list. This was on my list for a number of reasons. <laughs> did you go to the bur- burger uh, shelf? Or? I did not go to the burger shelf. <laughs> actually, do you remember what it was before Sunshine Season? Um, it used to have like the little God, facade. I remember it before, but the name is escaping. Yeah, when it had like the little barbecue place and the chicken place mm-hmm. and the cookie place. But I, I love Sunshine Seasons for a lot, a lot of reasons. Number one, it's a great place, one of the few places in Epcot that you can get breakfast, number one. And they have the traditional, you know, bacon, egg, sausage. They have oatmeal, French toast. I like it also because it's very wide open, very spread out. And because no matter what somebody in your family or in your party is looking to do or looking for to eat, there is probably something there for everybody. There is an Asian section. There's a soup and salad section. You can get uh, some really, really good sandwiches. There's a turkey and Monterey Jack focaccia sandwich that's very, very good. I actually usually go to the Asian section. The mm. grill has rotisserie chicken, salmon, the Tim Foster nine ninety nine pork chop. Uh, oh, I didn't eat the pork chop. Well, it's the Foster family. We're going to call it the Foster family pork chop. Foster family pork chop. Pork chops and apple sauce. Like the, the Brady people, Bunch the reference. Old, all the people know what I'm talking about. I like that. Um... There are also a bunch of grab-and-go items. So if you just want something quick, you know, as you're waiting online for Soaring or coming out of Soaring, you can grab things. 
They have a little sort of bakery section, too, with some really nice stuff in there. Um, carrot. Carrot cake, pumpkin Good muffins. Um, they have a, a nice chocolate cheesecake. They call it like an Asian chocolate cheesecake, key lime pie, caramel cake, flan sometimes, a lot of different baked goods. Again, you can grab a lot of these things to go. And many, many, many beverage stations and chips and healthy snack items. Uh, Sunshine Seasons, very, very high on my list. Um, big, big, huge thumbs up for Sunshine Seasons. So, I, hey, Speaking totally of things that aren't there anymore, though, what was this was an overlooked thing, and my parents actually pointed out to me. The around the corner kids could make their own those cookies. Yeah, right? all the way on the left-hand side by the entrance to... Which is sadly not there anymore. Listen to the land. Come on, break out in song and sing me a little Listen to the Land. <gasps> Uh, no. Dinner on me. Come on. Dinner on me. You already owe me dinner. I do owe you dinner. That's all right. All right. So let's move on. Um, I'm going to go out of Epcot. I will stay in the parks, of course. And one of two in Disney's Animal Kingdom um, is the Flame Tree Barbecue. Um, I, I really, really like the, the Flame Tree Barbecue. Um, I'm usually the one uh, getting the... the pulled pork or the beef sandwich um, with a big side of baked beans french fries they also have a st louis style barbecue spare ribs a smoked half chicken you could also get some cold items as well they have a turkey breast sandwich a barbecue chicken salad for tim you can get the fruit plate um but i I, you know sometimes you want something just quick while you're in the middle of the park I, i really like the the uh the beef or pork sandwich Note to self, do not go on Expedition Everest after <laughs> Lou had his beans at Flame Tree Barbecue. Where did we have breakfast on our meat day? Uh, we were over at uh, Tusker House. Did we go to Tusker House? No. Where did we go for Restaurant breakfast? Restaurant Source or Pizza Source, what, Pizza for whatever. <laughs> You're making my head hurt. Um, <laughs> Restaurant of Pizza. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yikes. It was yummy. <laughs> Move along. Uh, <clears throat> are you done? Uh, I'm done. I'm done. Virtue the big poetic beef. about flame tree barbecue. Okay, I'm going out of the parks for the next one. Um, every resort has their own counter service facility. Um, my favorite, though, for a variety of reasons, is uh, the Roaring Forks at the Wilderness Lodge. Um, partly because well, the food's good, although most of the food is similar to the food you find at many other counter service restaurants and the other resorts. Do have a nice tuna salad sandwich, though. Although, for some reason, I inexplicably said yes to, do you want cucumbers on it? I don't know why, because I don't need cucumbers, but at least I could take them off. But the thing I like about Roaring Forks, though, is where you are. Um, to me, nothing beats, especially when you're staying there, um, grabbing a snack, whether it's a breakfast or a light lunch or a snack. Taking it outside, sitting by Silver Creek Falls and enjoying the ambiance of the Wilderness Lodge, of um, which we've talked about before, and I'm sure we're going to talk about it again at some point. Hint, hint. Um, uh, but uh, just one of my favorite places to just sit and relax and enjoy the scenery, and uh, very conveniently located. And my favorite blast of air conditioning when you open the doors to go in. But that's a subject for another show. Interesting. Um... Interesting. Now, I will tell you this. <clears throat> Excuse me. Another rule that I just kind of made up for myself then didn't tell you about ahead of time. That don't tell me about was I, I All the ones that I picked were inside the parks. Service and resort. Well, no, I, I did. I picked everything. I picked everything on my list were things that were inside the parks because I had three that were outside the parks that I was going to uh, mention. Um, that I'll mention now just because we're uh, You know what? Up. I got one more out, out of the park one coming, and I don't care about your self-imposed <laughs> So, <laughs> all right, I'll save my out of the park, my top three out of the park counter service restaurants um, for, for the end. So I don't steal another one. Of well, I saw you wolfing down a tuna sandwich at the Roaring Fork. You liked it. I did. I liked Roaring Fork a lot. Um, and, and again, it's uh, it's nice tucked way downstairs and you can kind of go out by the water. I agree. But I'm going to stay inside the parks. I'm actually going to stay in Disney's Animal Kingdom. And, and what you say? Lou, come on. Back-to-back back counter service restaurants come in Disney's on. Animal Kingdom? What are you, insane? Listen, I also think Animal Kingdom is a two-day park. That was explained in lengthy detail years ago on the show. Yeah, but yeah. I really like, more, a lot more, believe it or not, than Flame Tree Barbecue. 
I love the Yak and Yeti counter service in Anandapur in Disney's Animal Kingdom. You can get many of the same items that you can get inside. They have a, a beautiful, very, very well-themed seating area outside near Cali River Rapids in the back of the restaurant. There's a little shop there as well. Some of the entrees you can get include honey chicken, sweet and sour pork, shrimp lo mein, kung pao beef, an Asian chicken sandwich, a mandarin chicken salad, which is very nice, very light, egg rolls, uh, fried rice, french fries, but I wouldn't get them there, Um, and obviously things for kids as well, which include cheeseburger and chicken, and you can get a pork egg roll. But you get a really nice-sized portion for about $10 to $11, uh, and you can get... A, a, a like a, a main entree and a side of fried rice and you can almost share it like for lunch you can share that between two people um, dep- unless one of those people is me then I suggest getting your own but oh, you're um, not taking me then no I'm not taking you there but uh, the food I think for in park counter service food uh, this was one of the ones that was, that was battling for for number one because I think it, it's that good for inside the theme park food because I feel that way about Yak and Yeti, how good Yak and Yeti's food is. And, and uh, again, when I talk about the food, I also talk about the complete dining experience inside Yak and Yeti and the theming and outside uh, just as very well done. So, Very nice. I can't wait to hear your number one. Wow. Hmm. Hmm. I'm intrigued. I'm on my number two. Surprise. I'm going back to Epcot because I like Epcot. And I'm going to Morocco in the Tangerine Cafe. I'm so happy you stole this one from me. Did I steal it? From yes, because this you was only had one left. This was tied for number one, and now I can I can ride on your coattails and still get to my number one. Okay. Awesome. Well, when I when I talk about the Tangerine <laughs> Cafe, you can fill in all the stuff I didn't mention. Awesome. Too. You know, because I only eat two things there. <laughs> I love the lamb platter and the hummus and the couscous. And then, and then you, the, the best part, you slip on over to the bakery and get yourself a little baklava. That's a good time. But <laughs> here's my favorite. I'm still waiting for this. Um, as always, I, I'll, I'll get um, my meal. Step outside. It's a little quieter. I, I still – I heard a rumor one point – or, you know, you sit down, you watch Moroccan – that somebody somewhere was writing about wonderful things to get as small souvenirs as you walked around World Showcase and made mention of a belly dancing DVD <laughs> that one could purchase. And I still, every time I go, I will eat at the Tangerine Cafe, sit outside, and wait and hope and pray that I will see Lou Mangiello belly dancing up on stage with the rest of the crew. But as yet unfulfilled. I will Lou, uh, really. When when am I going to see you up? I there? will do a lot for charity and for Make a Wish Foundation. But you should, dude. <laughs> we'll see. I, I there are limits to to the self deprecating humor. But yeah, I, that, I um, that's limit that. Well, that that's getting very close. But I, I am well. T- that's what Photoshop is for, my friend. So <laughs> everybody, wait and see. And- <laughs> The cover of Celebrations Magazine Special Edition. <laughs> um, I'm right, so I, with you. I go for the lamb platter. What is your pleasure at the Tangerine Cafe? Tim, I'm, I'm, I'm loving you here. I'm loving you because I agree with you 150%. Uh, wow. I think the shawarma wow. platters are the best things on the menu. There's a uh, there's a lamb platter or a chicken platter at, at $11.99 each. You can get a combo platter for $13.99. They're there's served, a meatball platter, isn't there? There's also a meatball platter that's served with rice. But I think the shawarma platters, which is the one you're talking about, is served yep. with hummus, tabula, couscous. You also get a fresh, warm, sort of like a, a Moroccan pita bread. It is the, the reason why this is so high is, number one, I think the food is, is fantastic. You, you watch them literally carving the lamb uh, right in the oven, right behind the counter. You get a huge, huge portion, and it's a great value. Probably the best value for the money for what you get uh, for anything on our list. And if you're saying, you know what, Moroccan food, it scares me. Not at all. Um, if you've ever had like um, like a Greek, um, like, a, like a gyro or anything like that, it's very much the same again. It's chicken. It's lamb. It's, uh, it's a great portion. Very moist. A lot of meat. Nothing scary as far as 
heavy, creamy sauces on there. The food is very, very light, very, very fresh. Um, and again, you can sit outside, well-themed seating area that's covered. You can watch or listen to Mor- Mo Rockin right across from you. Uh, other things, like you said on, on the menu, they have some great uh, desserts as well. A lot of um, wonderful pastries. There's a coffee bar and whatnot in the back. Um, there's some Moroccan wines and sangrias and beers and teas and things like that. Uh, again, I'm with you. I'm so very with you in the selection, in your choice. Uh, there are some other things. A couple of new items, relatively new items on the menu include Mediterranean sliders, which are three pita pockets that have lamb, chicken, and falafel that have sort oh. of that uh, like that, that, that tatini sauce, whatever it's called. It's yeah. got lentils and hummus and tabula. Again, like $13, um, and you get a lot, a lot of food. There's also vegetarian food here as well. Um, I know a lot of people who are vegetarian like they have a uh, like a vegetable platter that you can get here as well. So if, if that's a concern or a thought of yours, this is another great option for you as well. Very cool. It was funny because Morocco, it was what you said when I was, the first time I tried it, it was very much, uh, you know, that's the one place I haven't eaten yet, and I was kind of nervous about it. But darn it, I'm just going to go try something. And it's, it's, one, it's my probably my favorite uh, counter service restaurant at World Showcase. And I think maybe because yeah. of that fear, that that unnecessary fear that people have, like, oh, Moroccan food, probably not for me. There's usually not very much of a line there as, as well. Right. Yeah. True. So, Tandri Kenfa, a big, big, big thumbs up from, from Lou and Tim. Was All that right, your number two or your number one? That was two. Ah, so what What else could be remaining? What else could be... Eh, you're probably not going to like my number one. But, yeah. I, I very well might. So I think... Um, Mine's cheating, I'm going to tell you now. But. Oh. Go ahead. Well, go ahead and cheat. Go ahead and cheat. Well, I'm not... You're next. All right, so um, <laughs> I, I do have a couple that I'm going to mention because I think they bear mentioning, and if I don't... See, it's a it's a double edged sword. This is a, a total. Wait, you're catch seeking an honorable mentions before you're finished. No, I'm 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 <laughs> I'm giving my lawyer answer <laughs> and justifying why. Because uh. invariably, if I mention everything, I get emails from people saying, "Well, you might as well just mention every single counter service restaurant yeah. and stop calling it a top 10. And then if I don't, I get the emails like, "My God, man, are you insane? You've lost all credibility because you didn't mention blah," which is where we go every time. Blah. So. I do try and mention, because I do like a lot of these places, and I do like to try and visit them on um, most or many of my trips, but I think that uh, my favorite, asterisk, is also located in Epcot, and it is in arguably my favorite pavilion, which I've talked about in the past, but I just love, love, love the Yakatori house. I love the location. Yes. Yes. Wow. The Yakatori house. Uh, located high in the back of the Japan Pavilion. Again, let's just talk about location and view and that beautiful, quiet, you know, waterfall garden outside. Uh, they have a great selection of food. They have sushi there. They also have um, tempura and shrimp udon and beef udon, teriyaki chicken. The sukiyaki beef is often what I get. That's about eight fifty. You can get a ginger cake, which is nice for dessert. Or a side salad that has a great ginger dressing and miso soup. Um, there's also, um, obviously, rice things and teriyaki chicken, whatnot in there. It's pretty inside. It's more beautiful outside. Again, I think it's a good value. I like to usually get maybe a salad, a little bit of tuna, my my main entree, uh, ginger cake. And, and wow, as I say that, it sounds like I eat a ton of food. But um, I think the food here is very good. Again, if you can sit outside in that covered area overlooking the promenade and with the water garden behind you, I think it's, um, yeah. Why do you sound so surprised about Yakaturi House? Uh, well, because, uh, number one, if if there was a one in one A of things I liked at Epcot besides Tangerine Cafe, that was one A. And I almost put it on my list. Then I, I thought you'd give me a hard time about it. I don't know why I thought that. Because I'm, I'm absolutely right with you. That's my other favorite place to, to eat. I, I, with you sitting outside watching everything, I'm a combination kind of guy too. I get the everything one. But I don't know. I'm totally with you. That's one of my favorite places. I'm you know, so we're, we're reaching new heights in our bromance here. 
You know, our, wow. our, our number ones are the same. We like to, to eat the same things. We're going to have a wonderful wow. time next time we go to Walt Disney that, World. I, I can't great. Uh, so, now, if they can only bring back the maple candy of Canada, it would be a perfect evening. Oh, you and my wife are very much on the <laughs> same page. And I still go and I ask every time. And, and the answer I usually get is either they don't carry it anymore or as soon as they do get it in, it sells out right away. Yeah. To which my answer is uh, just order more. But Yeah, well, true. Or... Here are the stale M and M's you ordered, Mister Mangella. <laughs> inside joke. So is there a? Um, it's not an inside joke. It's it's on a video that we did way back when, where you were yelling at me for talking through uh, the illuminations. Uh, what did we order? I, I think we had gotten some candy from there, and we had gotten Smarties, and I said that they tasted like stale M and M's. Yes, this was your your honest to goodness eat my way around the world day. With stops in Mexico, the American Adventure, and Canada. Yeah. I don't know how you did it, but... <laughs> and still, still we weren't done. I have to find that. I have to link back to that video so you, people can see you yelling at me and Glenn for talking and laughing during, a, uh, during no, Illuminations. Listen, hey, look, you're watching Illuminations. Like, Shh, One of my favorite are. things. It's the, uh, the, the, the music, the narration. Uh, it's totally inspirational. Makes you weep. Makes you cry. And here are these chuckleheads behind me talking about how stale the M and M's are. <laughs> Shut up! I, you know, well, I gotta I, tell I, you, if, if they saw it, they, I would totally be sided. Be, oh, be, listen, be, hey, listen, that was a uh, that was a great time, and it was a fun yeah. video. I have to uh, <laughs> go back into the video section on the site and find it. Um, it's one of the very first ones I think that that I that I posted. But I'm I'm incredibly curious as to what your number one Tim Foster oh, counter so service. Building up. I am building it up. So because I know that well, there's a story and it's a go with me here. No, it's not a go with me. It's a cheating because I couldn't separate these all. Um, yeah, <clears throat> I, I, by my nickname that you continue to bestow upon me, the bananas business. Oh, I thought it was Samantha Brown. <clears throat> no, not Samantha Brown. Well, that could play into this. You'll see. But I, I do have a bit of a sweet tooth. Yeah, Samantha Brown, bananas. Take it any way you want. <laughs> but... I will always, if there's a bakery around, I'm there. Now, the question was, which bakery am I going to stick on my list? I couldn't decide, so I'm squeezing a bunch in. You see, this is how I'm cheating, you see? You're very silent. I feel like I'm, I'm very silent it. because you're stealing what I normally do, which is mentioning <laughs> six things before I get to my actual one on the list. But I'm hoping that at I'm least not- one of them is an Epcot, and it's one of the ones that I enjoy as well. Well, there are two in Epcot. No, so let's start, start with this. One is <clears throat> uh, the obvious one, I think, the one everybody must go to, the Boulangerie Patisserie, which we've talked about many times. Um, again, again, it's so, so many wonderful things to eat in there. Lots of, lots of sweet treats, of course. You can also get your ham and cheese croissant or your chocolate milk or however you say it in France. I'm sure somebody will correct me on that because I tried and, and badly mangled it and got a severe look from the person behind the counter but um, but again I, I believe I mentioned this before one of my favorite things about the boulangerie patisserie is getting your dessert or your sandwich or what have you and then not necessarily sitting right there but taking it over to the garden side by the lagoon and sitting there it's, you'll always find a quiet spot the view is beautiful of course one of my favorite places to just sit down and relax. Um, my other stop in Epcot is across the way at the Kringla Bakery, Og Cafe. Which is I'll actually say. the one when you said, when you mentioned bakery, this is the one that came to my mind first because this almost made it onto my list. Yeah. Um, of course, over in the Norway Pavilion. Um, some standard fare there, but uh, but if you go there, do look for the Norwegian treats that are there um and i've, I've tried a few um and they're very good that uh, you have lefsa which is um which is pretty pretty unique i haven't tried something before it's like a, a a bread sort of thing that's rolled up it has a cinnamony butter spread in it um very good a little unusual for used to you know standard donuts and muffins and all that kind of stuff love um, the lefsa by the way school bread is also very good uh, my favorite discovery though was uh, the norwegian pudding or Norwegian Christmas pudding with red sauce um, which I absolutely adore which is basically like a rice pudding with a, a strawberry sauce on it um, it's a it's a very traditional dish in Norway and we actually we had somebody here 
at our house from Norway, and we actually cooked up our own batch, which was great. Because at, at, at the Kringla Bakery, you get this little cup. We, of course, made this big mixing bowl full of them, which was just really, really good. But, um, but, but lots of interesting, unique treats there to try. So I would definitely recommend you make a stop there. Um, my other bakery hotspot, one, one of my old favorites, and a very popular destination, of course, the Main Street Bakery, home of the best cheese danishes in the world. Although, as I found, the cheese danishes, you can kind of get them all over the property. but They just uh, taste yeah. better at the Main Street Bakery, just, don't they? Well, <laughs> it does taste better. I know they're the same. Go with me here. But they taste better. Now, I'll say the cheese danishes in Walt Disney World as a whole, best you'll find everywhere, anywhere in the planet. I still swear. But, I, in fact, I had one in the, uh, the uh, Ticket Transportation Center parking lot for some reason. There is a stand there that sells them. Very surprising. <laughs> And very messy when you're walking through trying to eat one of those on a hot day. Um, but probably my favorite bakery is the Boardwalk Bakery on the Boardwalk. Um, not only can you get a variety of sandwiches there, tomato mozzarella, very good. But the desserts they have there, unbelievable. Uh, I had a peanut butter pie that was, oh my gosh, three inches thick and six inches long. Um, and again, a very nice place to have a snack, either sitting by the boardwalk or if you happen to be staying in one of the resorts, taking it back to your room and sitting out on the balcony overlooking Crescent Lake, maybe watching Illuminations if you time it right. Um, but really, really unbelievable desserts there. Um, bigger than I've seen them most any other place. And you really get, they're really heavy, so you get a big bag to carry them around. So there are four bakeries into one. And that's only four of the only four of them there's so many more around so are those four bakeries into one your number that's one my counter number one. service that's so, my number one so the boardwalk bakery technically is your number one counter service restaurant in walt Disney. well if you're gonna make it technical then yeah i guess so okay i i was not <laughs> expecting that and, and i i agree with you about all of them i didn't sort of think about bakeries in that way although you should make a point too that a lot of these bakeries you can get sandwiches at as well. It's not just sweet treats. I know, especially over in Norway, uh, they've got like chicken salad sandwiches and egg salad sandwiches. Right. They've got some open face sandwiches there as well, and that holds true for some of these other bakeries as well. And and I'm with you. Boardwalk Bakery is one of my favorite places to go before Epcot opens. Getting a cup of coffee, some sort of a sweet sugary treat to carry you through the day, load you up on caffeine and sugar, sit out there. <laughs> on the boardwalk just watch the boats go by across um, you know to the yacht and the beach club and and uh, really nice way to start off a, a relaxing morning um, if you're staying yeah, in that that's, area that's straight i find i'm eating my sweet treats at night watching illuminations you're you're eating yours first thing in the morning as you're waking up because here's, I how, that here's how i justify them because you yeah, get the sweet you're gonna stuff walk the, it off you're gonna walk it off you need the sugar <laughs> so by the time not by the time illumination comes i've walked off everything i've eaten all day which means I can certainly start eating all over again. No, well, see, the way I see it, I've pre-walked it all off during the day. <laughs> okay. So, I mode. I got, I got like 1,200 calories in the bank. Right, you're banking the hell. Well, I better bank more start, than that, right? that peanut butter pie because I'm sure that was topping out at five <laughs> figures somewhere. But Interesting that you can bank health. Um, hey, anything you're doing at Disney is good for you. I know. Just keep that in mind. I know. It's yeah. all healthy. Eat that piece of broccoli, and it takes all the bad stuff away. I understand. So announce to the world you're eating, and it doesn't count. That's my other trick. I'm having peanut butter pie. That's just it. If you say that out loud to everybody around you, you're absolved. It's off the hook. No calories, no fat, no carbs, nothing. Nope, it's all you're good stuff. Free. You're free. And like my mother said, if you got a cookie and it's broken half, you eat, you can eat the other half because all the calories fell out. <laughs> of it. All right. So I gave you. Tim, really, my my top five and a half. I, I know I snuck a couple in there too. Mm -hmm. There was one more that's a relatively recent addition that I didn't add on my list for a couple of reasons, but I wanted to mention anyway because I was so impressed with it. And I think too, it's kind of a borderline counter service, borderline cart. You know, almost like a a permanent cart, and that's why I didn't do it because it, it has only uh, a, a few things on it. And if you 
Take the walk from Future World to World Showcased and bear to your right going counterclockwise. Hey, wait, hold on. Walk going it, where? It. You're going to World Showcase from Future. Future World is yep. the big thing with the ball. Okay. Ball, so you're walking, big golf ball right, thing. Right, the big okay. golf ball and thing. And That's exactly water. what Walt wanted you to call it, was the big golf ball thing. Um, right. <laughs> if you go to the right, going counterclockwise, yeah. on the right-hand side is gotcha. the refreshment port, which used to sell McDonald's brand food. And when that contract ran out, uh, I guess late last year, early this year maybe, they started serving some very unique items. And this is what I love to see Disney doing with these kind of things, not serving burgers and fries. Instead, they're starting to take, I guess, cues from what was working well during food and wine festival, maybe. And they hmm. serve things like beef or cheese empanadas for $3.99. <gasps> A huge, monstrous size, crispy chicken sandwich with tostones. Uh, and tostones, which you can also get separately, I, which I love, are these crispy fried green plantains that are smushed. They're fried. They're like three dollars as a side dish. Uh, you can also get, and this is this is my recommendation. I mean, I, I love the empanadas, but a great value is you get the crispy fried shrimp with the tostones. It's six ninety nine. When I was there, when it first opened, I think I got maybe eight. Big yeah. shrimp and the tostones on the side. I like you've got eight of them. Uh, no, I got eight because that's Go I wanted to write. No, I mean, I got eight <laughs> shrimp in my single portion. Uh, with the tostones, you get this uh, nice sort of mayonnaise, ketchupy dipping sauce on the side. Uh, you can also get frozen mojitos there. There's a dulce de leche ice cream sundae there. There's um, coffee and iced coffee, things like that. But the empanadas and the shrimp and tostones really really like that one especially for lunch if I'm if I'm walking around especially if I'm going solo I get that I go across the way sit on a bench overlooking the water of the World Showcase Lagoon and uh, very well priced good different meal uh, without having to go if you want something a little bit more exotic than the normal fare and on the opposite side by Mexico they also have another sort of permanent uh, kiosk there as well that has nachos and quesadillas and things like that so uh, I, I like seeing these little places cropping up here and there but the refreshment port I'm tell, I'm taking you there empanadas and tostones are on me my friend aren't plantains bananas they are well they're like they're from the bana- they look like bananas they're from the banana, banana family but they're awesome and they're <laughs> salty oh god they're so ew good. oh they're phenomenal somebody <laughs> please come over Comment on the show notes. I'm pointing to the. I'm pointing to my computer. When you hear this, come over, back me up, and comment on this week's show notes at wdwradio.com and back me up about the empanadas and the shrimp, and more importantly, the plantains, the nice big fried salty plantains. Ah, oh, big iced tea on the. Ah, oh, I'm set. Oh, oh wow. my god, I'm starving now. I'm starving. Oh, well, you, don't we usually end the show this way? <laughs> Are you hungry? Well, no. We usually end the show, Tim Foster, with some honorable mentions. Oh, uh, why did I? All right, hold on. Yeah, insert the Get back. <laughs> Put your feet up. Grab a wasn't tostone. This, wasn't that an honorable mention? What you it is. Did? It was an honorable mention. But so now these are the honorable mentions to the honorable mention. No, these are ones that I just I, I just want to kind of mention. Uh, for, so okay. I because. Uh, I did put three off to the side because they were outside the parks and I, and I shouldn't have segregated them at all, but I just wanted to have an excuse to mention three more. Uh, I was really surprised that neither one of us mentioned, and maybe because you haven't eaten there yet, I will take you okay. to some places in downtown Disney. Uh, one of which is the Earl of Sandwich. And what do they, what do they serve there? Well, funny you should ask Tim Foster. They serve some of the best Sandwiches you can get on property on, on this wonderful sort of this uh, artesian like baked bread. Uh, they've got roast beef and turkey and ham and and meatball sandwiches and veggie sandwiches and chicken and tuna. They're phenomenal. They're like five dollars and ninety five cents each, uh, and they're pretty good sized sandwiches. They also have soup, salads, wraps, kids things as well. A uh, bunch of different side dishes. There's some grab and go stuff. Uh, right from the counter all the sandwiches are made fresh for you so there often is a line there but it moves pretty quickly 
but the sandwiches there are great and again a very good value as well at five ninety five each. Um, they also have some specials every now and then and uh, and different types of soups and and stuff as well. Have you ever been there? No, because you're going to take. Me. I am going to take you Earl of Sandwich, my friends, for lunch. Tim Foster is on me. Nice. But something else I love, and for a long time, this was sort of my traditional. Oh, I've got to go back to the airport today. I'm going to spend some time in downtown Disney. This is my meal before I go is also in downtown Disney uh, in the marketplace side because there are two of them. The marketplace side tucked in the back by the Christmas shop is Wolfgang Puck's Express. And they've got excellent food there and it's counter service. Everything from pizzas to pastas to salads, uh, Really good, big, big portions. Again, especially two of the pastas. The prices uh, are, are not all that bad. The service is very fast. You can sit outside and eat. There's usually not a very long line there because it is so kind of tucked far away in the back. But if you haven't been there before, I highly recommend um, checking out Wolfgang Puck Express. Resort-wise, so, go ahead. Uh, so is that the place to get good pizza at Disney? Uh, well... Relatively speaking, it's not. Okay. Listen, if you're looking for Chicago or, or New York style, not what you're going to find. But they have, you know, the Wolfgang Puck sort of signature pizzas, uh, more than just the traditional, you know, pepperoni pizza. You'll find some pretty interesting concoctions I love there. Pepperoni pizza. Sorry, <laughs> that's wanted to let you get that out. Sorry. Um, <laughs> over in the resorts, you're right, and one of my favorite places because it's at my favorite resort, and I think it's sort of a, a nice little hidden away place I think people don't look at this as a place to maybe get food other than grab and go stuff is the Beach Club Marketplace obviously over at Disney's Beach Club Resort it's in the back of the gift shop and right so oftentimes I'll go there for coffee and maybe a muffin or a roll or or a great uh, ham egg and cheese croissant sandwich in the morning but they also have in the afternoon and in at dinner time they have great sandwiches as well, hot and cold. They have roast beef and brie on sort of a, a ciabatta bread. They have a ham and cheddar and a bunch of other things. This is a great, great option if maybe the kids are tired or you're tired, you're coming back, you want something to eat but don't want to go out. You go right to the marketplace. You can obviously get, because it's a DVC resort, the gift shop there has a lot of grab-and-go snack items and drinks and things like that that you can take back to your room or back to your villa but it's also another place that you can get um, some good sandwiches and some some lunch and dinner items as well. You know that's outstanding. I'm 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 clapping for that. I'm going to take you there too. Well, I've been I, I I've been in there. Well, then and I send my offer. I, well, I've <laughs> well no, you can still offer. <laughs> no, I mean, I've noticed it. Or I've seen this a zillion times, but that didn't occur to me to put yeah. that on. Like, kudos to you. That's that's brilliant. And you know what you do? You go sit out like on the sun porch. Yeah, it's, the solarium. This, oh, it's so nice out there. I thought you were going to go to the beaches and cream takeout window there. No, but but I'm so happy that you mentioned it because that's <laughs> another good counter. <laughs> well, it's not, but it's not really counter service. So. Hey, it's all well, you're at a you stand at a sort of counter and get your stuff. <laughs> you can sit at the counter, I guess technically. Um, I will tell take- you, I will tell you something that I miss. I do miss the Cantina de San Angel outside on the lagoon, but I'm very excited for the new Cantina, the new bigger, more expanded, big seating area outside on the lagoon Cantina that's coming later on this year. We're all very excited. And you're going to take me there, too. I'm going to take it. You know where else I'm going to take you to? I'm going to sure. take you to Via Napoli over in Italy. No. Yes, because they're claiming... This mm. Tim, this might be the place pizza? in Florida to get good pizza, oh. because they supposedly are importing the water from. I knew you were going to say I, that. From a, now it's not supposedly it's not from Naples, but it's from <laughs> the same type of water that is found in Naples. So, Vianopoli, Naples, Naples, uh, well, not, probably not Naples, Florida, but I think they mean Naples, Italy, or or, uh. or Naples, Brooklyn, because. Uh. Uh, that is what is going to make all the difference. So, Vianopoli, I- I'm, I'm holding out hope that you are going to hit the home run with good pizza, and that you are going to be the place to go in Florida for good pizza. I t- I learn something new every time I do the show. The secret to good pizza is water. 
I never would have thought that. Again, somebody, come comment on the show notes this week and back I me up. I believe you. <laughs> I believe you. It makes sense. I just... It's I the water. It was, you know, oh, my cheese or something. Or, no, you know. it, it's the water. Um, that's uh, the one thing I miss about Florida. It's getting really good. There's no good Italian deli either. A little really? super sod and fresh mozzarella and bagels and pizza. I mean, I'm not going back to Jersey anytime soon, but I digress. So... <laughs> Miss the cantina. Looking forward to the new cantina. Really looking forward to Vianopoli, both of which open later on this fall. Uh, I want to throw out. I'm just gonna. I'm not gonna comment. I'm gonna throw out a couple of other names for you. Tell me what you think. Like, mm-hmm. dislike, as far as counter service restaurants go. Casey's yep. Corner in the Magic Kingdom. Um, uh, I liked it better before. Before. I, I don't know. The hot dogs seem different now. Are they different? Like they're not as, they don't seem as good as they keep were. Keep digging, keep digging yourself. Go ahead. I'm not digging. <laughs> I, I remember they were great, and I got well. Maybe the one I had because it all fell apart in my thing. But you know, now I'm with you. Uh, one of my things was at the end of the, towards the evening. Again, I eat evening. You eat in the morning. But getting two hot dogs, loading one up with sour cream and mustard, and loading the other up with with the whole cheese thing. So I had two things going on. Oh, did my stomach hurt later that night, but it was good. It was all worth it. Uh, another one I, I really, really, really wanted to put uh, on the menu. Uh, I'm on the menu. God, I'm thinking about food now like crazy. <laughs> that I wanted to put on my list was Summerfest in Germany. Ooh. Yeah, and see, that's the thing. People, I think, walk by because Summerfest is the counter service. I can't even call it a restaurant. It's like a counter service. It's like the size of a of a bathroom stall, but like behind the facade, you have to go and sort of go into the pavilion to see it because the line forms inside the, the covered entrance, the queue area almost for beer garden. But they have bratwurst and sauerkraut and Frankfurt mm-hmm. with sauerkraut and mm-hmm. soft pretzels. And the, you give me a, a bratwurst from there with sauerkraut and mustard. And if beer is your thing, you're in the right pavilion. Um, but because the, the menu was so small, I didn't put on there. But I love the bratwurst and the frankfurters at Summerfest, and they're like six and a half dollars or so each. Hold on, note to self: don't go on test track after. <laughs> <laughs> but you keep mentioning that, all the rides you won't ride anyway, so it doesn't matter. No, that's wrong. You know, we're, we're gonna. Okay, but summer, so give me a re- give me your reaction self. to Summerfest. No, love it, and it's the answer to the age old question: Where can I get a good hot dog in Epcot? There you go. Yeah, there you go. No, really, it's, 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 I, I even forgot about that. It's so easy to overlook. We have a lot of places to, to eat next time we I go. I know. We, uh, there's a surprise. There's, there's a magazine article in this somewhere. Fish um, and chips. I, I, I was just going to say Yorkshire <laughs> County <laughs> Fish Shop. Going. Yorkshire <laughs> County Fish Shop. Yep. What do you think? Oh, very good. Love it. Love it. Boy, they're hot, though. They are hot. Well, you know what? Tem- they make tempered. everything right there, like according to the, the yeah. recipe from... Yorkshire County, <laughs> wherever it's from, um, very very traditional uh, English fish and chips. Now I might need a lesson, and it might just be me, but I, I swear the vinegar packs—they are the hardest packs to open anywhere. They're always—it's probably because I've been eating the fish. And I chips was going to say, get the grease off your hands first. Easy. I'm trying to open the pack, and they're slipping and sliding. No, good. It's very good, very good. Very pop. It gets very popular, though. Yeah, right before Illuminations time. For those people that couldn't get into Rose and Crown, uh, Yorkshire County Fish Shop counter the walk up um, gets very, very popular. Um, I'll throw one more out there for you. Um, Starring Rolls Cafe. Oh, I almost put that on my bakery list. It should. I, I'm very surprised and I'm somewhat offended that it wasn't on your bakery. Well, list. I figured after four, you're gonna start. We got the point. Giving that verbal scowl. So that is my. Um, that's now my go to spot. I know what you like about it too. What do I like? I can tell you what you like. You like getting your coffee, your your sweet whatever it is, sitting outside and people watching. Ah, oh, you know me. You know yep. me well. <laughs> I told you the bromance is really blossoming between us because uh, I do. Uh, when I go to the studios, you know, especially look, I, I'm not going and I'm not running for Toy Story. I'm not running for Tower of Terror. I love Peter, just sitting outside and, and and watching and relaxing and again loading up on the caffeine and the sugar. So yeah. Now I love. I'm I'm a big iced coffee guy. 
And I, I, you can get them anywhere, obviously, but I, for some reason they taste better there. The coffee. Yeah, tastes better. They taste better. It seemed natural. I, I get the, you know, get the vanilla coffee. That's how you fill it up with. Well, I fill it up with. Um, you know, can you leave half of it empty for cream? That's my direction usually. You know, fill it up, but basically have a, you know, glass of milk with some sugar in it. But it's. Uh, I, just, I just have to have that every time I'm there. Wonderful pastries. And they have sandwiches there too. Again, I think a yeah. lot of people, and, and they're huge. They have these monstrous sort of uh, quarter, like the, these chib- ciabatta bread things loaded with like black forest ham. Um, yeah. Some wonderful desserts there too. We, we've heard about you know, the Butterfinger cupcake and things like that. But I think Starring Wolves Cafe is another one of those ones that, that's yeah. somewhat overlooked, but really, really nice and just sort of quaint sitting outside under the umbrella. So. Uh, I think I have mentioned uh, no, pretty much all the counter service restaurants in the park. So I guess that yeah, we're done. Nailed. Pretty good. I, I guess that we're done. But um, <laughs> I, with the list, look, it's not meant to be exhaustive. So please don't yell it at. You can yell at Tim for forgetting some. Please don't yell at me. I yell at me. If you your know, favorite, Tim, Tim says stuff that doesn't exist. If anymore. your favorite wasn't on the list, that's okay. Um, I what I would prefer that you do instead of yelling at me is coming to the show notes at wdwradio.com commenting on this week's show notes tell us ones that you agree with or that you don't agree with or that you want to maybe post a little review on ones that you can't believe weren't on your list but are some of your favorites or your family's favorites as well Um, and make the argument for it and if we forgot it then it gives me another reason to go and visit and take tim foster Um, i hope that maybe we introduced you to some or or at least one that maybe you hadn't thought of before and maybe you want to next time you go to Walt Disney World you might want to give it a try either by yourself or with your family again there are great options there's so much variety there's no ADR and it's not all about the burgers and fries and um, and there is some great food to be had at a lot of the counter service restaurants in Walt Disney World both in and outside of the parks and uh, Tim Foster like I said we need some more research. We gotta pull a Celebrations magazine article together about this somehow, Absolutely. so I can justify some more meals with you. That could be a special issue. The food issue. The food. Oh, nah. <laughs> I'm on it. I got this one. I got the food oh, you issue got covered. That, you got that covered. <laughs> so obviously, Tim is my partner on Celebrations magazine. Um, you can learn more about the magazine get back issues and subscribe over at celebrationspress.com you can also send letters to the editors that would be us if you have a suggestion or something you'd like to see in the magazine email us let us know as well and of course please head on over to guide to the magic.com and find out all of the guide to the magic goodness that tim has including his incredibly wonderful one of and i'm not saying this because you're here and i have to my favorite Disney books is The Guide to the Magic, and I hate saying it for kids, but it's called The Guide to the Magic for Kids. Uh, it's a beautiful book for adults to look for, at as well. Thanks. See, now I'm going to get you to buy me food <laughs> I, next I, time. I, I, I got so, your dollar here. All right, so until our next top 10 with Tim Banana's Samantha Foster segment, Tim, thank you again as always. Thanks. I'm hungry. I'm starving. I am <laughs> famished at this point. It's late into the evening, and and uh, just okay. my time. Okay, so if we're we're in Walt Disney World right now, we're at the resort. We can only go to one place. Where do we go? Late night, late night snack counter service. Where do we go? Where are we? It doesn't matter. I'll t- I'll drive you anywhere you want to go. The drive buses go everywhere. Anywhere. Well, there's not much. Uh, take Pretend it to everything is still open. I want some tuna fish? Tuna fish. Well, we have to go to Norway and get the tuna sandwich. At that quarter of 11? It's extra magic hours. Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Done. <laughs> That's going to do it for this week's show. Thanks again for tuning in. And also thanks to Tim Foster from GuideToTheMagic.com and my partner on Celebrations Magazine for joining me for another fun top 10 list. You can find out more about Celebrations Magazine, subscribe, order back issues. And if you have an idea for an article or want to send in a letter to the editors, that's me and Tim, you can visit CelebrationsPress.com. Be sure and come by the website over at WDWRadio.com 
There you can comment on this week's show notes about anything that you heard or that you want to hear, as well as our daily blog post, photos, news, trivia, vacation planning, history, lots more. And stay tuned for more videos coming very, very soon. Be sure and go and like or fan the WDW Radio page over at Facebook.com slash WDW Radio. And please come by, follow me on Twitter. I'm at Twitter.com slash Lou Mangiello. I post updates throughout the day as well as play games, post pictures, and lots, lots more. If you're not on Twitter, it's fun, it's free, it's easy. Again, links to all these can be found right on the homepage of WDWRadio.com. I want to remind you again about some upcoming events, including the 24-hour live show from Walt Disney World. That's May 22nd and 23rd. If you're going to be down in the parks, come by the meet of the month. That's going to be Saturday, May 22nd at Disney's Hollywood Studios from 2 to 4 p.m. over at the Studio Catering Company. It's also Star Wars weekends. Should be a lot of fun um, spending some time in the parks and broadcasting as well. So if you can't make it down, you can tune in live for all 24 hours at wdwradiolive.com you can watch us along the way chat and interact in the text chat as well just go sign up for a free account over at ustream.tv and you can chat right on the site from there if you are going to be there saturday night we do have a couple of tickets left for the private illuminations dessert party that's saturday night the 22nd from about 8:15 to 9:30 the cost which includes Desserts, beverages, tax, gratuity, everything else like that is just $25 per person. And we are asking for a $5 minimum donation to the Make-A-Wish Foundation because the entire point of this 24-hour show is not just to have fun, but to raise money for the Dream Team Project, ultimately benefiting the Make-A-Wish Foundation. If you can't get there, I encourage you to tune in. We're going to be doing a lot of fundraising throughout the 24 hours, including a few surprises along the way. And we're also going to be having a number of live auctions throughout the day and the night. Stay tuned for more details about how you can get involved, how you can bid on the auctions as we get closer to the date. On August 14th, I'm really excited to head back out to Linwood, Washington for the Pacific Northwest Mouse Meet. That's Saturday, August 14th. Uh, lots of special guests, including Imagineer Bob Gurr. Margaret Kerry is going to be there. There's a show and sale. Lots of speakers, lots of things going on. I'll be back again having a table and broadcasting from there as well. But if you want to come out and join the fun, you can go and visit pnwmousemeet.com. October 8th through the 12th is Congaloosh 2010, where there's going to be an entire weekend of fun surrounded by the legacy of the Adventurers Club. Everything from multiple tours and discussions by Jim Corcus, who you've heard on the show Jim is a, an amazing font of knowledge. Should be a lot of fun. There's also going to be dinner and a show by the Adventures Club cast as the Adventures Club cast on stage at the Indiana Jones Epic Stunt Spectacular where after the parks close, we're going to reserve the venue, have dinner there, and they're going to perform a very, very special show never before seen by guests on Saturday There's a show and sale. There's a banquet. There's Q&A with the Adventure Club cast members. More Jim Corcus. I'm going to give a tour of the Jungle Cruise. Lots going on on Sunday. A lot of surprises. Lots more. For more information, click on the show notes where you'll find a link to congaloosh.org. And of course, the thing I'm most excited about comes in 2011 when we cruise on the Disney Dream. That is going to be from February 27th through March 4th, 2011. And in addition to all the stuff going on on the cruise, and we're going to start announcing some of the special events and surprises that we have planned, we are going to have a pre- and post-cruise land portion in Walt Disney World as well. We right now have an exclusive pre-cruise land package that Mouse Fan Travel put together for those of you that want to spend a couple of days in Walt Disney World before the cruise. The packages are going to include two nights at a select Disney resort and once again Mouse Fan Travel has secured some great rates at All Star Music Pop Century, French Quarter Riverside, Wilderness Lodge and the Beach Club. You also get an invitation for two to attend an Illuminations viewing and dessert party. There's everything else that's included as well including as always a few more surprises. For more information visit this week's show notes or www.radiocruise.com for information and links. 
Don't forget, if you have a question you want answered on the show, email me at lou at wdwradio.com. If you want to play listener fact or fiction for a chance to get on the air, play fact or fiction with me for a chance to win some prizes. Send me an email. Include listener fact or fiction in the subject line. Also include your phone number because you never know when I might call you for a chance to play. If you want to be heard on the air, you can call the toll-free voicemail line at 888-703-2171. Don't forget to come by the site at wdwradio.com. There you can still order signed copies of my Walt Disney World trivia books, my audio guides to Walt Disney World on CD or instant download, Main Street USA, Adventureland, and Fantasyland are ready. I am working on Liberty Square and maybe a couple of surprises right now, but you can get all three together and save on CD or download. Again, you can find these right on the homepage of WDWRadio.com. There you can also find a link to a new product I just released last week. That is the iPhone, iTouch, or iPad WDW Radio app. It's going to give you easy, instant access to everything from the site, including the blog post, videos, the podcast, and so much more. It is completely 100% free, so go ahead, check it out, and download it, and please, of course, help spread the word. And as always, if you like the show, all I ask is that you please do just that. Please help spread the word and tell others about it. Let other people know you're listening. Tweet it out if you're on Twitter. Come by, rate and review the show and the app, actually, over on iTunes. And of course, most importantly, my friends... I hope you have a great, great week this week, and always, always keep moving forward. Thanks again for listening, everybody. Have a great week. See ya. Hi, Lou. This is Gary Zarelli, Staten Island, New York. Just want to say your podcast is probably the best podcast out there. Can't wait for your Monday morning uh, new podcast to hit the air. I don't know what it is, but every time I listen to you, I'm transported back to Disney the greatest place in the whole world. And I don't know, I feel like I'm sitting on the rides when you're talking and I'm eating at a restaurant when you're reviewing. You and Tim Foss should have a comedy team. Tim Foss a good man. And so when you do your top ten, I'm telling you, that's almost better than cable. All right, Lou, you take care of yourself. Just keep up the great work. Thank you for giving the Disney fans out there something to look forward to. Have a great day. Hi, Lou. This is Scott calling. Just started listening to your podcast recently. Really enjoy the show. Just got back from Disney World a few weeks ago. I went with my wife for the first time. We had a wonderful trip. Stayed at Port Orleans French Quarter. Your show does a great job at capturing the Disney World feel that's often indescribable and allows people like myself from New Jersey to experience that feel when they're not actually at the parks. And that's, that applies no matter where someone is from. Also, really enjoying the new iPhone app. It's great. It's actually how I'm calling you tonight. And uh, keep up the great work. Look forward to all the exciting things ahead. Take care. Hi, Lou. This is James calling from Newfoundland, Canada. My sister and I both love the show. And actually, my sister just got accepted into the Disney College program. And tomorrow, Sunday, she's leaving to go down for three months. And she's a bit nervous, so I was just wondering if... um, if you could put this on a show, a little shout out to her, just so she can hear uh, hear my voice while she's down there. That'd be great. Thanks, Lou. We'll love the show. See ya. Hey, Lou. It's John from Somerville, South Carolina. We are in the Magic Kingdom. I just had the Angus Beef Hamburger Cheeseburger here at Takeout Bill. I thought about you. I thought I'd give you a buzz. We're having a good time. See ya. Hey, Lou, it's John from Somerville. We're on our way back to South Carolina after a cool weekend in Disney World. We were celebrating our anniversary and also our daughter's birthday. We had a great time. Everybody say hi, Lou. Hi, Hi, Lou. See ya. Hey, Lou, it's John again. Hey, I just wanted to let you know that I really enjoy the Jim Corcus podcast about the Pinocchio Village. It's really interesting, and I hope that further on further podcasts that Jim will join you and everything and go through many things about Disney. I have some upcoming things to tell you about and I was wondering if you and Jim could possibly do like the Tower of Terror, possibly Pirates of the Caribbean, or one of my favorite Disney attractions, the Haunted Mansion. 
and everything. As a Walt Disney cast member, I got to view the walk behind the scenes uh, thing of the Haunted Mansion and to learn some of the history, some of the facts, and some of the things that actually go behind the scenes and how they make the magic for that attraction was amazing. I look forward to coming down in October for Food One Festival because I missed it last year. And I know you like to eat as much as I like to. And also and everything, I'm glad the Pal Mickey is still on. I still have both of my Pal Mickeys from Disneyland's 50th anniversary and Walt Disney's World uh, Share a Dream Come True. And uh, they're both in their original boxes and collector's items. I also uh, enjoyed the podcast with Riley Peterson, and I picked up all three books, and I can't stop to put them down and everything. Thanks so much for what you do, Lou, and hope to see you at a future visit at the Walt Disney World Resort. Thank you, and have a magical and amazing week, and I can't wait to hear your next podcast coming up. Thanks, Lou. Goodbye. Hi, this is Renee from Fort Collins again. Just calling. I know I'm a couple shows behind, um, but I just heard uh, Kevin's message at the very end of, I guess it was show 165, um, where you had the review from Paradise um, 37. And uh, just wanted to say that I was glad that he was at Colorado Trippia because I never knew that Heritage Square and the North Pole were built by Disney artists. That's really cool. Both of them were places that I really enjoyed a lot as a kid, and um, it was neat to learn some new trivia, so thanks for that. And uh, hope everything's going well, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey, Lou, I guess not. I was going to call, and you asked for me to sing any Disney song, so here it is. I'm going to sing Feed the Birds from Mary Poppins because Richard Sherman was on his show, and I listened to both um, podcasts, and uh, I loved him talking about his favorite songs, and that song was really close to Walt, so I'll sing that for you. Might not turn out uh, that well on the phone, but luckily, I hope they have. Uh, we hope that they have karaoke on the Disney cruise. I can do it there in person. Okay, here it is. Early each day to the steps of St. Paul's, little old bird woman comes in her own special way. To the people she calls, come by my bag full of crumbs. Feed the birds, top in the bag, top in, top in, top in the bag. Feed the birds, that's what she cries. While overhead, her 